So that's what we're going to be looking at some of the options that are contained within the event listener. So setting the click event and then setting up the use capture. And the use capture is going to control which direction the flow of the events go. So if you have multiple events are nested with elements that have events, then you can use the use capture to control which way the events are flowing, either from the child up to the parent or from the parent down to the child. And there's also options where you can set it. So if you only want one click on the event listener, you can set once to true. So these are Boolean values that allow you to control the way that your event listener behaves. Go ahead and select the page element with the click me button. And that's going to be the H2. So select the element using the document and then query selector in order to make the selection of the element. Just going to be using the tag because we only just do have the H2. And in this case, let's go ahead and we're going to add an event listener to that page element. So using the add event listener method. And the event that we're going to be listening for, the type of event is going to be a click event. And then we need to create the listener. So the listener is going to be an object that receives the event information and it's going to be expecting a function. So you can do an anonymous function within the add event listener code statement. And within here, we'll simply type in to console log and I'll type out clicked. So whenever that gets clicked, we get the clicked. We can also get the event object. So try tracking the current event object on the element whenever it gets clicked and selecting the event type. So here we can track that this was a click that was occurring. You can also get the event target, which is going to be the H2. And in this case, we already have the page parent element that's going to be receiving the target, but you can also send this over to a function. So in this case, if you had multiple elements, and I'll just update these to be element one and element two. So these can be any elements on the page and we want to add event listeners to these elements and track it into a named function. So comment out this part and we'll create the named function. So also for the second element, I'm going to select the element with a class two of output and we'll also select the third element and that's going to be the one with the H1. And this way we've got three different elements. We want to track the events on these elements. So selecting element one, add event listener, the event that we're going to be listing for a click. And then the result here is going to be a function called output. And within the function output, we're automatically passing the event object into it. And here we can track within the output area, the event target. So that's going to be the element that triggered the event. There's also the event type. And we'll track both of those parameters. So into the output element. So let's go ahead and we're going to add to the other page elements the same result where we're passing those events into the function. So depending on which element gets clicked, we're tracking that information into the output area. And we don't have any content within the element too. So let's go ahead and we're going to add in some text content there. And I'll just type in the word click so that we can actually see it on the page. So that also gets tracked in and we're sending it over to the function. There's also optional parameters. So there's uh, different options where we've got the use capture. So use capture is a Boolean value uh, as to which events and the way that they get registered. So if you do have elements that have nested events, then you can track by default, the use capture is going to be false. So let's create a main page element. We'll add some other additional event listeners to those elements. So creating a for loop and then going to be nesting a bunch of elements within other elements and creating a loop with the value of zero. And then each one of these elements will nest five elements into a parent element and increment it by one, creating a temporary object. So this is our main temporary element that we can nest content into. And for now, what I'll do is I'll make a selection of that element. Now let's go back into the HTML. We'll add a little bit of styling so that we can see the page elements with the output class and adding in a border of one pick solid. 
and that will allow us to see the page elements. We'll also set a width and a height for the elements, so it's a little bit easier to see those elements that when we're nesting them within the other parent elements. So we're going to be looping through and adding the class of output to the elements that we're creating. So let's go ahead and we're going to create an element using the document create element and the elements that we're going to be creating are going to be divs within the elements using the class list. Go ahead and add the output class to those elements. And then within the elements, we're going to add in some text content into those elements. And the text content can just indicate the index plus one element. So that will give us a bunch of elements. And so now we want to add it to the parent. So select the temp element and append the newly created element into it and then assign to temp the element that we just created. So that will be the new parent of the child element. So we get this type of effect where we've got a bunch of elements that are nested within other elements and so on. And we want to add in the click event to those elements. So right now we just have the main click event on the parent element. I'm going to comment out that so that when we click it, nothing happens. I'm also going to set IDs, so it's a little bit easier to distinguish the page element. And we'll just use the index value for the ID as well. So we'll call it L, and then using the index value, we can set that element ID. And then out here within the console, we're going to track the ID values of the element. Now this is a little bit difficult to see, so let's update the height of each one of these elements and we'll have it as a decreasing value as we the number of i gets larger. So setting the height, and the height can be a value of 300 minus the value of i times 50, and then turning that into a pix value, and set the style height of each one of the elements. So that will create a nested effect of the elements where we've got the element five nested within four, three, two, one. I'm also going to update the width so it's a little bit easier to see the differences between the elements. So as the element count increases, then we're going to set a new width for the elements. And then also update the text align to center align the text. So now we can better distinguish between the different elements. So if we want to click just the element five, and also let's do a background color. So the way that the elements are being set is that they're nested. So five is nested within four, it's nested within three, two, one. And we want to track the event clicks. So using the use capture, which is a way to track the events either bubbling up through the tree or going down from the parent to the child. Default for the use capture is going to be false and actually we're going to track the index value so simply into the console and this will show you what the index value is of that element that's being registered so whenever it gets clicked it will output that as the index value so just save that and now by using the default which is false for the use capture we click element 5 and within the console, we get registered the values starting at four, going down to zero. If we click one of the parent elements, it's not gonna go down into the children. It's simply gonna select whatever element is that we're clicking. So in this case, we click the first element, which had an index value of zero, as it's the first parent. So there's no children within there. There's no other events that are gonna get triggered. If we click two, it's gonna trigger the second element, so that gets registered first and output first, and then also the parent element, which is the one element that's being registered there. So let's trade, change this and update this to be true, and now the order is going to be different. So we still get on the parent because we only just have the one element, we get it starting at zero, but if we click five, we get a different order. So this is going to be an order going from the parent all the way down. So starting at zero, which is the parent element, and then going one, two, three, four, as opposed to when we did it the other way, where we're using the use capture of false, and that was sorting it within the opposite direction. 
So you, this is again an optional parameter and it's a way to control the order as to which way the events occur when child elements also have events attached to them. Use capture is set to false. The events will flow upwards from the child to the parent. And when the use capture is set to true, the events will flow down from the parent down to the child that triggered the event. The use capture can also be set within the options and the options can contain even more parameters that you can set within the event listener. So instead of having it as within the click, we can comma separate out and create an object. And then within this object, we can contain the different options. So using the capture option and using the Boolean value for the capture option, set the capture to be true. That the it's coming from the parent when it's set true and going down through to the child. So in this case, we see that it starts out with the value of zero and moves all the way down. You can also set the events to fire off. So if you only want them to fire off one time, set a property within the options to fire once. This is also going to be a Boolean value. So you can set that to true. And now whenever we click it, we're only going to fire it off one time. So now when I click the child, which is going to be the fifth element, we only see three and four being registered. So now no additional events are registered as we were able to remove them. They were only fired once. So the listener set it to once and then it sets it and removes the ability to click it again. So that's the way you can control the event listeners using the add event listener and the different options that you have when you are setting the event listener. In the next lesson, we're going to look at the different types of events that we can listen for. So in this case, we just looked at the click. We're going to look at the different event types within the add event listener.